Coming up on ABC 7 at 10, several areas seeing rain and storms again. It's why we've remained under an ABC 7 first alert Doppler. And as we talked about tonight, the brunt of the storms now are concentrated into Luna County from Columbus up to Deming. That's where most of the rain is going to continue late tonight into the overnight hours. But we have more opportunities for rain and storms. I'll talk about it coming up in a while. Stunning findings in a report on the Walmart shooting case. Why the district attorney's office is now being accused of intimidating an August 3rd victim's family and the transcripts that reveal a whole lot more. Unbelievable. I, I cannot comprehend what the DA was thinking or her representatives. A former district judge shares his thoughts on the allegation brought forth in that report. What he says could be the implications regarding the state's case against the accused Walmart shooter. I think it's unethical, it's immoral, and a change has to be made immediately. Plus, the attorney who filed a motion to remove DA Rosales says the new report adds urgency to his petition to be addressed. How Rosales is responding through court filings tonight. Live, where news comes first. From the Mesilla Valley at Las Cruces to El Paso and the Borderland. This is ABC 7 at 10. Good evening and thank you for joining us for ABC 7's 10 at 10. I'm Eric Elkins. Stephanie Valle is off tonight. We'll get to the dramatic developments in the August 3rd case at the state level. But first, take a look outside tonight. Many of you seeing plenty of this. Some rain, some wind, some bolts of lightning. This taken from the west side of El Paso along Mesa and Sunland Park. You can see how quickly that water is ponding in the roadway, making it for a bit of a difficult drive for many who hit the roads earlier tonight. And that's why we remain under an ABC 7 first alert. We want to send things over to Doppler Dave with our chief meteorologist with our first alert forecast Doppler. Yeah, you know, the first alert continues and the folks out in Luna County certainly going, well, here comes some more rain for them. And we even have some heavier pockets of rainfall. Notice for El Paso and points off to the east, we have dried out for the most part. We have a very slight chance of rain overnight hours. But if you look out there, uh, towards Doniana County, you folks here in Las Cruces, a few sprinkles, perhaps some light rain developing up there, but certainly by far. Look at Columbus up to Deming, the lightning and some of the colors there. The red signifies some heavier rain, more rain coming up from the south and heading towards the north. Of course, Friday night tomorrow, we have the Friday night football games, big weekend with all kinds of activities. We're going to look at our latest feature track computer model. This is different from what we showed you at 6 o'clock. Run the model, talk about how much rain you could see into the weekend. It's all coming up in the weather. All right, Doppler, thank you. A new report released today alleges District Attorney Yvonne Rosales, who you see pictured in the center here, her office using intimidation tactics against the family of Alexander Hoffman, who you see just to my right here, one of the victims of the August 3rd shooting. Also involved in all of this is a municipal court judge in the village of Vinton, Roger Rodriguez, who you see on the far left. It is a difficult story to understand. There are a lot of moving parts in this, so we're going to break down the key events that led us to today's bombshell report. This all started June 27th when Rosales held a news conference where she announced her hope that the state's trial against Crucius would begin in the summer of 2023. Jump forward to July 1st. Judge San Martrano, who is presiding over the state case, issued a gag order stopping people connected to the case from speaking about it publicly. Judge Medrano also questioned Rosales' proposal of a summer 2023 trial date. On that same day, and according to John Briggs, who was the lead prosecutor on the case at the time, victims' families met with the district attorney's office and with municipal court judge Roger Rodriguez. At that meeting, Briggs said Rodriguez reportedly whipped the victims' families into a frenzy and proposed that Judge Medrano be recused from the case. Then on August 4th, the day after the third anniversary of the shooting, media outlets received an email alleging KVIA coverage from the day before violated the gag order. That email was signed by the son of Alexander Hoffman, although the Hoffman family denied that he wrote it. On August 18th, at another hearing, Judge Medrano appointed attorney Justin Underwood to represent the Hoffman family and asked that no one else speak to them about the case. A few days later, on August 24th, a local defense attorney, Omar Carmona, submitted a lawsuit to remove Rosales from her position as district attorney. Then on September 9th, Rosales went through with Rodriguez's suggestion and filed a request to recuse Judge San Medrano from the case. On September 27th, that request was denied by a visiting judge, and Judge Medrano was allowed to remain on the case. That brings us to today, October 6th. Underwood submitted his report on the emails allegedly sent by the son of Alexander Hoffman and accused the district attorney's office of intimidating the family. 
takes us to the findings of today's report. In the report, attorney Justin Underwood says the Hoffman family was, quote, continuously victimized by an employee of the district attorney's office. The report, uh, report claims that Ann Rodriguez, who is the wife of Vinton Municipal Judge Roger Rodriguez, and who Underwood says works at the DA's office, sent the email from Alexander Hoffman's widow's phone impersonating the family. We did check, by the way, with human resources, and neither Rodriguez nor his wife are employed by the DA's office. The email, though, accused one of ABC7's guests of violating the gag order for discussing the Walmart case on our newscast. The guest was Amanda Enriquez, a former prosecutor on the case. Underwood says they used the phone of Hoffman's widow to send it. Underwood says they used the phone uh, again to send that and says the widow, Rosa Maria Valdez Garcia, did not know anything about the email. Another big accusation Underwood made in the report was that the state's former lead prosecutor, John Briggs, thought the email came from Roger Rodriguez. Underwood says Briggs was terminated three days later. Lastly, the reports say Roger Rodriguez tried to intimidate Hoffman's widow once the family denied having sent the email in question, allegedly telling her to not betray him because he, quote, had snipers everywhere. In the report, he claims the family lives in fear of retaliation from the DA and Roger Rodriguez. Following the filing of the report, questions are arising about the future of the state's Walmart case, mass shooting case. Where does it go from here? ABC 7 Sarah Correa spoke with a former district judge to get extra perspective on the implications this report could have on the case. She joins us live with that perspective. Sarah. Eric, the former district judge I spoke with says District Attorney Yvonne Rosales must disqualify herself from the Walmart shooting case in light of the information that came out today. What he discovered nobody expected. Former District Court Judge Chris Antcliffe told me he was shocked by the information that Attorney Justin Underwood filed today. Unbelievable. I cannot comprehend what the DA was thinking or her representatives. Aunt Cliff thinks District Attorney Ivan Rosales has no choice but to recuse herself from the case. I think she must disqualify herself as a result of the information that came to light today. The court can appoint a special prosecutor to uh, prosecute that case all the way through until it's completed. A second option would involve Judge Lewis, who is hearing the petition for removal, followed by attorney Omar Carmona, to appoint an interim district attorney. Ann Cliff says a move of venue is also possible. I, I would expect the defense to move for a change of venue, but I, Judge Medrano will decide that at the, the appropriate time. A move he thinks would be a disservice to El Paso. People are asking, can this case be tried in El Paso anymore, given all of the information that came out today? Um, whether this, this district attorney can try the case. Uh, from my perspective, the case has to be tried in El Paso, the state case. Uh, it happened to El Pasoans. El Pasoans were killed. Aunt Cliff added the most concerning part of the file document alleges the DA's office questioned Mrs. Valdez Garcia's position as Alexander Hoffman's widow. The DA's office allegedly claimed the two were legally divorced in 2001 and that, as a result, Valdez was not a widow. This ultimately contributed to the revocation of her sentry pass used to cross the border. That they would interfere with Mrs. Valdez Garcia's right to cross the border, uh, that's phenomenal, unbelievable. I cannot comprehend. And Cliff added he had not seen anything like what the DA is being alleged of doing in his entire career. Reporting live from the courthouse, Sarah Coria, ABC7. All right, Sarah, and the attorney who filed the petition to remove District Attorney Yvonne Rosales, Omar Carmona, says the new details we're learning related to the Walmart shooting case today make it imperative for her to be removed from office immediately, while Rosales has now responded to that original petition as well. Carmona filing his petition on August 24th, following the series of cases that were dismissed this summer after the office failed to indict hundreds of cases, those completely unrelated to the Patrick Crucius case. He cited incompetence and official misconduct as reasons to remove Rosales. The petition to remove her now rests in the hands of County Attorney Joanne Bernal, who has until November 1st, by virtue of an extension, to take action. Carmona says the findings of the report could be added as new evidence to his petition. That when I filed it back in late August, I believe that there was enough 
evidence of you know what they were doing for removal but now this only um, reassures that that she needs to be removed right away so it's definitely something I hope that Ms. Bernal uh, will take into consideration as she is deciding to wh whether or not to prosecute my petition for removal. ABC 7 reached out to the Office of County Attorney Bernal and she told us she has no comment on this matter at this time. So what about Rosales? Well, today Rosales met the deadline to file a response to the citation to have her removed from office. In the document obtained by ABC 7, Rosales argues she and her office did not break any laws or ethics in her office. She also says she denies every allegation included in the removal petition. And at the end of the document, she demands a trial by jury in this case, though in that it's not clear if she is aware of what was revealed today. It is important to download the KVI News app. That's where you can find articles with information on the latest developments in this case, as well as articles chronicling this story through the last few months. We have been breaking this story from the beginning. We'll continue to follow it and bring you complete team coverage. By the way, all those transcripts and the document filed by the report filed by Justin Underwood today are all on KVI.com right now. You can read every word of them.